Welcome, everybody. It's Rad Melissa. Hello, hello, hello. Let me know where you are from. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be with you this evening. Oh my gosh, I just have um, a lot of things going on in my spirit for all of you. Please let me know where you are from, where you're, you're, you are connecting in. I'd love to know. Uh, and I'm going to just let you know ahead of time, I'm, I'm double checking some technology literally right before we were to come on. Internet dropped, but I prayed over it. We got it back up and running. Uh, last week, we found that um, we found that I found out after the recording that we are supposed to be live on YouTube, the EHM YouTube page as well. And unfortunately, there was a, a break in the connection and that did not occur. So I, I apologize, but there was nothing I can do. But we're just believing full force, full steam ahead. God has already gone before us and he is holding everything together. Amen. Good evening. Uh, hello, Miss Karen. Hello, Miss Cheryl. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful night. I am so delighted that all of you are here. Wow, come on. We've got some things that God is doing in this season of our lives. And I just want you all to say it's my time. Everybody put it in the chats. Who's watching now? Who's going to watch in the future? It's my time. It is your time. There is a movement happening with the Lord and you are a part of that movement. And I'm going to just talk to you about breaking off those limitation mindsets. We are going to be moving in such a way with God that we are going to be fearless women that are truly, truly being so confident in him. Good evening, everyone. Miss Darlene, Miss Kathy, Miss Dorothy. Ah, Miss Margaret, yes, it is your time. We are faith, uh, fearless women because we know we serve a faithful God. Amen, 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 amen. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the next 30 seconds, find three people that you can literally tag and say, come join me on this party tonight. Rev Melissa is going to be bringing a word. I believe it is, uh, honestly, because of the uh, warfare that has been happening, um, I believe it's a word that the enemy's trying to stop. But I'm going to tell you, God's word always goes forth and it always accomplishes the reason for why he has sent it. And so I believe there is this movement of what God wants to do. So I want to encourage you to invite three friends right now. Hey, join me on this talk. And, and we're going to just, I'm just going to be honest with you. I believe God wants to break off some lies. Last week, we talked about operating from a position of rest, what that really looked like from a spiritual aspect, as well as from a natural, um, natural as well. So let me ask all of you who have watched last week from a spiritual perspective, how are you and Jesus doing? Uh, give me some hands up in the, in the comments. Let me see the hands up on how you and Jesus are doing. And I also want to ask this question. How many of you actually physically were intentional with your water intake between last week and this week? Now, don't get caught up in, oh, I missed one day, but you were truly being intentional. I'm going to be intentional with taking better care. Yes, give me another. Um, that one, just do two thumbs up, right? Two thumbs up for that one, two hands up with God time. All right, I'm going to give it another uh, just 15 seconds. I am going to open us up in prayer. I want to thank you all for giving of your time. Time is the greatest commodity that I absolutely just respect and revere in all of you. Thank you for giving that um, because once it's gone, it's gone. And so I want to invest in you because you were important. You are so important. And so I just want to make sure that you get out of it as well. All right. So, Father, I just thank you right now that we are posturing ourselves before you, Lord. And God, we have been quoting in here saying it is our time. And Lord, it is our time. It is our time to move in a new stride. 
It is our time to move into a new rhythm with you. God, we are breaking off this, this, um, I almost see it's like this heavy cloak that we've been wearing and it, we don't even sometimes know it. It's subconsciously it's there and we just wear it. And so Lord, we're not wearing that cloak. We're not wearing that reproach anymore. We're moving in a new rhythm with you. And that rhythm is just so beautiful. There, it's, it's inundated with your grace and your love and your mercy. And God, I just believe right now that you are exposing the lies of the enemy that is trying to keep us in a place of captivity and keeping us bound and keeping us not able to forge ahead because we're listening to the lies and the accusations versus listening to the voice of truth. So Father, I'm asking right now, Give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. I ask, Holy Spirit, that your voice would be that of like the fire that comes forth, speaking, burning out those lies that have tried to hold us captive, those lies that we have bought into that have diminished our self-worth, that have diminished the way we see ourselves. And Lord, I just thank you for the fullness of what you're going to bring. Holy Spirit, I'm asking for the Spirit to increase without measure this evening. I am humbly coming before you. I give you all my fears, all my insecurities, everything. I lay it right before you. I'm not embarrassed by it because God, I know what you can do. And I don't want it to be me. I want it to be them. I want you to meet with them, whether they're in their cars, at the office, on a job, in their homes, in their PJs, on the back porch, beautifying and just enjoying the sunset, wherever they are. God, I'm asking you in this hour to move in the way that only you can. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so let's talk about blind spots. We've been, we spoke about it last week, and this is this is that area. This whole month, God is just having me focus on, and the blind spots impact our vision. We don't see things, and when we don't see it, then accidents can occur. Think about that from a natural perspective, correct? But also, it, if we have blind spots, they keep us uninformed, and that's the that's the area where I really want to focus in on to tonight. It's that place of being uninformed where the enemy is hoping that you remain. And how many know that the lack of knowledge, the word of the Lord says that his people perish for the lack of knowledge. And you know what? Ladies, we are not perishing. In fact, I believe God is releasing this equipping word because he wants to instill, not just instill, I believe he wants to stoke a fire fresh and new in you tonight. Because there are things that God needs you to do. And some of you have already kind of checked yourself out. Some of you have already sidelined yourself. And I'm telling you, God is repositioning you. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things. So if you hold on, hold fast to me. But this message, honestly, is for that person, you, or someone you know, that has been on the hamster wheel, that has been on the merry-go-round. If that's you, stay tuned. Because I'm going to discuss some things that we keep going around and around and around that God is saying, enough, enough. It is time to move forward with a fresh fire. And we're going to do that. Everybody agree? If you agree and you want that fresh fire, I want you to put that fire emoji in there and just blow it up and say, God, I want more of your fire. Because this is what it's going to take to get us to the next level with him. I want to start tonight with our scriptures, I have to bounce back and forth. So just bear with me because I have my, my technology over here, but I want to bounce back and forth. And I want to just 
show you our, our initial and um, scripture for this evening. In fact, it is going to be our scripture for tonight as well as for next week. I'm, I'm picking back off um, this scripture for two weeks in a row because there's so much richness that God wants to bring out of it. And I just want to um, just really pull it out so that we walk in the fullness of what he has for you. Amen. Okay. So how many of you know that God often speaks the ending from the beginning. He does that so that we align ourselves up with him. So when God is speaking, and many times, many of us have probably experienced this, where we have experienced a vision, or perhaps we um, see a certain scripture, and all of a sudden it's speaking to us. But the state that we're actually in, or that we feel that we're in doesn't necessarily align right yet, or it is not actually being experienced right yet, but that's okay. Because what God is saying, I'm going to release this over you so that you start aligning with me. All right. We need to align ourselves with him. And I want to look at a very key scripture and it is Genesis 1. And it's verses 26 through 28. Please do not just skim through and think, I've got this. Because I believe there's so much richness that God wants to release to you. I want to read the living word of God. Lord, just breathe on us at this hour. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and everything creeping that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image God created, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So when God was creating man in his image, when it says man in his own image, that word man is not gender based. It's referring to humanity. Okay. But then he expounds on that and says, so he created them both male and female. This is really, really key as where we're going tonight, because just trust me, hold on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So then God, look at the next verse, God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. All right. This is the reset. This is the place of God's initial intent that he desires for us as women, you and me, your nieces, your daughters, your sisters, your mom, your aunts. This is that place that he desires for us to occupy, to be fruitful and to multiply. It was not just about procreation. It was, it, go, it was bigger than that. It is about not only a spiritual, I'm sorry, a physical aspect, but it was also from a spiritual perspective that we were to be in the likeness. We are to be into the kingdom of God, all part of one big family, speaking the love of Jesus, moving with him. Amen. All right, so here's what we get to. We find that this was God's initial intent. And then we know that, that sin entered the world and everybody focuses on Eve. You know what? It's not just Eve at a fault, right? But God didn't, that didn't stop God. God already knew he already had a plan. Hold on, I know some of you go, I know this, Melissa. I got it. Okay, I know you may got it. Just bear with me. Because I'm kind of wondering if you really get it. And I'm just going to get in your business. Because I'm. this is what I'm really sensing. I'm really sensing that too many women are floundering. We're just fish out of the water floundering. Because we know, but we really don't know. We're not occupying the very things of what God has for us. Can you bear with me? Can you just run with me on this one? Okay, so here's God's initial intent, right? He's saying, I want you to take this position and be in my image and in my likeness. And these, this is the mandate I'm giving you. This is that op occupancy that I want you to have so that you fulfill the very things. 
So we know the fall has come, but here's what I'm, this is what I'm worried about. Ready? I'm quite concerned that we're not living where God intended. In fact, I want to look at scriptures and I, I'm going to let you know, I did not put all the scriptures. I'm going to highlight some to you. So let me just highlight, you write them down and we'll come, you can look them up. But this is another famous one. Ready? Second Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So this is that reset moment, right? This is that reset moment that God said, even Adam, you messed up, but guess what? I already had a plan in motion. I'm going to reset everything into motion so that my initial intent is for you to continue to occupy the place and the position and the power of what I have for you. But in this scripture, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. We are so good at shouting out Christianese. Oh, I'm a new creation. I am loved by God. But I think this is the hang up. And I, Paul put it in there so beautifully. He says, all things have passed away. Can I ask you a question? Are you holding on to some old stinking thinking? Are you holding on to an old wardrobe that's not becoming of you anymore? It doesn't look beautiful on you. Can y'all see I'm wearing my royalty garbs this evening? I even have on my royalty ring that Miss Maureen Kirk had bought me uh, years and years ago. I put on my royalties because I knew that this was my new wardrobe. You know what? I was thinking about this. It was, it's this place where God's saying there's a new creation. All things have passed away, but all things have become new. Here's the problem. We struggle. Let's, I'm just going to be really real. Okay. And you got to hear my heart. We struggle with the conflict of some things and we can't even begin to fathom God's grace and his love towards us. And sometimes the becoming who he desires for us to become, we get so inundated with our past that it, it truly becomes blind spots for us. And this is what tonight is all about. Tonight, we are going to look at specific blind spots. And there's five areas, I believe, five lies that we as women buy into that is really negating God's initial intent for our lives. And I believe God wants to sever that this evening. I believe he wants to sever the very thing so that you walk in the wholeness and fullness. But you've got to be all in. You've got to be that place where you are really saying, God, it's not that I should. It is, God, I must. This place where I'm living, it is not the place that I want to occupy anymore. I want to move with you in a new way. I want to live a new way. I want to think new way. In fact, I want you to look at something because tonight's theme is really about royalty. Royalty is this. Royalty is a state within your thoughts, your attitude, and your behavior. This is what it means to be created in the likeness and in the image of him. We are allowing ourselves to go through a process where he takes us and says, you know what? All right. Before you met me, you dealt with a lot of things. And I want to talk about this for a second. Okay. So before we met Jesus, right? Before we encountered Jesus, each of us have had life experiences family upbringings, um, events that have happened to us, uh, traumatic or not traumatic experiences. There's culture bias that has influenced our perception in some way. There have been words that have been spoken over us or maybe even actions, behaviors by others that have also affected the way we see ourselves. And in it's in this place that we start to form a perception, an image of ourselves. 
It's this place where we truly, this is this place where we validate ourselves. It's this place that we honestly see ourselves. I want to ask yourself, do you see yourself in a place where you feel valued and that you're valuable? Because that's the place that God wants us to see. Do we see ourselves as valued and valuable? These are two very distinct things. And I want to break them down tonight because there's a lies associated with both. Okay. So do I see myself as valued? When I ask that question, it is my perception. It's my belief of how others are, how I, um, I am being perceived by God. It is my perception of how I'm being perceived by others as well as myself. So when you take all of the dynamics of what you have been through before you met with Jesus, that's the past, right? That's the past part where God is saying, you know what? That all that stuff is gone. When you weren't living with me, he says, now your spirit man is new. But he's saying, listen, I got to deal with some things because you've got some past stuff that has formed and shaped the way you think about yourself. You've got things that have molded and shaped the way you think about me. And then there's places in our hearts and our minds and our thoughts that have formulated and how we perceive others. Okay, tonight I really wanna just focus on the concept of how we are perceiving of what we believe, what, what we see of God as well as what we believe about ourselves, that valued part, our self-worth. This is where our self-worth comes from. It doesn't come from what we do. It comes from our who, who we are. And Jesus and, and Paul wrote it in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We're a new creation, right? But it's that place of occupancy that we so need to really, really occupy. And I'm going to I'm going to put a couple things to the test and I'm going to see if you are lying, buying into any one of these lies, because, see, this will tell me whether or not you are feeling that you are valued. All right. So you may not. We're, we're looking at valued and valuable. So hang on. Hang with me. Everybody hang in with me. All right. Give me give me a thumbs up. Are, are you all are all in a in a moment right now saying, OK, God, I got this. You've got my attention. If if God's got your attention, give me eyes. Give me eyes. Give me eyes on the on the emoji board. Give me eyes. Let me just see what does God have your attention because you're focused. Right. All right. So let's talk about the lies that we might believe that if we are valued or not. <clears throat> Line number one. Ready? I'm not doing enough for God. Line number one is I am not doing enough for God. You know what that could be? I'm not praying enough. I'm not serving enough. I'm not spending enough quality time with him. I'm not um, doing enough for him. I'm not um, being where I need to be. Do you know what that is? What kind of mindset that is? That is a performance mindset. When we are so focused in on what we do, we're not seeing the true value of who we are. And this is what happens when we buy into this lie. We dismiss ourselves from the equation with working with him, with partnering with him. Dismiss, it means we quickly dismiss ourselves because we are living under old patterns of our life. We're not seeing our true value of how he has seen us. To, to dismiss, it means to treat as unworthy of serious consideration. Anybody? I've been there. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm telling you, my drive, my motivation is to get women from where I had been from that place to a new place of freedom. I don't have time to be like, oh, yeah, my life is all perfect. Sorry, it's not. 
but I'm a work in progress. And each and every one of you are a work in progress. And so we need to move into this mindset saying, you know what, God, I'm tired of dismissing myself from the equation. I'm tired of thinking that I can't be used and I can't, I don't like to use the word used. You know what that makes me, you know what that sounds like to me? I'm just going to be honest with you. It's like someone, you, you pay for a service. I don't believe God wants us to be like that. I believe it's relational. I believe God is in a partnership with us. Amen. And so we see ourselves in this place where we are focusing on certain areas. And this is what I want to talk about because our spotlight is focusing on the negative of what we're not, who we're not, what we're not doing. Versus on who we are, who we have are becoming. Do you hear me? Our focus is on the not, who we're not, who we're not becoming, what we're not doing. That's the spotlight. And that spotlight becomes then the blind spot to us walking in the fullness of what God would have for us. Lie number two, I'm not worthy enough. And let me expand on this quote. I'm not worthy enough because I keep trying to stop this, but I keep doing X, Y, Z. I keep trying to stop. I keep I keep wanting to quit. And, and some days I have good days and some days I have bad days. You fill in the X, Y, Z. Some days I'm good at dot, dot, dot. And some days I'm just a mess. Paul said it so beautiful in Romans when he says, I do not understand what I do for what I want to do. I do not do, but what I hate to do. This is that place. Gals, listen, this is this place where God is saying, this is where you do not understand what you do. This is that focus where God says, I need to put the spotlight on that because your action is a reaction to a wound, to an area within your heart, within your mindset that is not whole in me. I need to bring my healing. I need to bring my, my healing into that area. The blind spot is this. When we Focus on what we do, that part, but I hate what I do, right? Here's what happens. It um, subjectifies ourselves to a lower way of thinking about ourselves. We don't see ourselves as valued. We consider ourselves unworthy. God has, we're dismissing ourselves. How could God use me after I have struggled with this? How could God use me after I have been bringing this to him every day? How could God, anybody, anybody, come on. I know this is tough. I know this is like, oh, Rev Melissa, come on, this is a little heavy. You're right, it might be a little heavy, but I also know this. If we do not, listen to me. If we do not push past the pain, I was thinking about my nephew today, Sam, he had shoulder surgery and it's that place in rehab that when they say, listen, you've got to be able to push past the pain so that you get full motion again, full stretchability again, full movement again. Some of you have been in a place of familiarity, that place of comfortability, because it's easier for you to dismiss the pain versus addressing what needs to be addressed and moving on in a new season with God. Because here's what happens. You keep going around the same circle. You keep going around the same merry-go-round. And God is saying, listen, I'm giving you a pass to get off. And if you get off, I promise you, you will live in greater freedom than you've ever experienced before. But you've got to move with me. You can't hold back. 
And you're going to say to me, Rob Melissa, I don't like this. I don't like to have to feel this way. I don't like to have to deal with this. You know what, honey? Listen to me. Truly listen to my heart. If you do not deal with it, you will continue to subject yourself to these places that will continue to bring you down. You will literally put yourself in a place where you think, you know what, I can do this. It kind of gives me that quick fix. But before the night is over, you are already going downward in a downward spiral. And here's what happens. Do you know what happens? We take the baggage from the night before and we're bringing it into the new day of the next day. And the Lord is saying, my my mercies are new every morning. We have got to stop taking the garbage from the night before and chewing on it the next day. This is that place when Paul was saying in Corinthians that the old, I'm sorry, that the new is here and the old is gone, but we keep regurgitating. How is it? It's kind of not very good, is it? I don't know about you, but I don't want to keep regurgitating areas in my life. I want to live in the new. And I know, I, here's what I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, well, how do I get, how do I get there? Because I am, I'm really struggling. Well, first part is this, and it goes back to um, something very key. What's your spotlight on? If you're only focusing on the negative of who you are, what you're doing wrong, that's all you're going to see. I tell my empowerment girls all the time, what you focus on, you empower. So how do you break free from that? It starts with one simple thing. Well, it's actually two. Number one, you come out of an alignment with these thoughts that have been given to you. But number two, you also start having new thoughts. Focus on the good that's in you. Focus on Jesus in you and focus on making the milestones of saying, okay, I got through this today and I did this with Jesus. I'm a lot better off than I was yesterday. And, and little by little, I will continue to make progress until I am walking in complete freedom because it's not that I should, it is I must because I'm no longer going to allow the enemy to hurl his accusations at me day and night. Amen. Amen. It is time. You know, I, I said last week, we need to occupy that place of rest, that place of rest. And I want you to look at, I want you to write down Psalm 91. I'm going to read this verse it's, we, we quote the uh, Psalm 91 so beautifully so many different times. But I want to focus at verse 4 for a moment. It says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. I looked up the word buckler. It refers to like a small shield that you would literally um, use as a close for contact fighting. So it's like on the arm here. The shield is much larger. In fact, you can literally dig the ground and behind you uh, and all around you and where the spears and arrows and rocks would come, uh, it would, it would, uh, you would be protected against that attack. That's what that definition means, right? And so I want you to think about this. <laughs> I want you to think about Wonder Woman. I love the movie Marvel with the most recent. I, in fact, a couple of years ago, I did this whole series on Wonder Woman. And I just want you to think about this is where God wants you to put on your buckler. You put up, everybody put up their arm. I want you to put it in the comment chats. Come on, you got to be engaging with me. You got to be prophetically saying, I am putting on my buckler. No longer will I allow the, the enemy to come at me. Close combat, that's for close combat. That means he gets in your ear and that means he tries to tell you certain things or he reminds you what has been spoken about you from others in times past or he will remind you of the very things that you said ready 
I am never going to do blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, he reminds you and says, ah, didn't you say you weren't going to do that? And you just did. You put up that buckler and you say, no more. I know whom I am and I know whom I have believed in. And I know that I am a work in progress and I will no longer allow myself to dismiss myself when Jesus has completely qualified me through the blood, his blood. And I am taking my right, rightful position in him. Amen. Oh, I love, I love these arms that are coming up. This is great. Oh, I love it. This is so beautiful. Okay. So the second point I want to focus in on is that do we see ourselves, number one, as valued? Number two, do we see ourselves as valuable? I think a lot of women have a mixture of both. They're struggling with both. Um, but I also think there is, it's like a 50-50. I think some fall in one category, some fall in another. And tonight I want to just tackle, do you see yourself as valuable? This is what I believe. This is my perception of being valuable. It is what I believe I have to offer. This is that area very quickly where we will disqualify ourselves. What that means, the word disqualify, to deprive of requirements, qualities, or properties or conditions to make unfit. We are so good at disqualifying ourselves from the equation because what we believe we have to offer is not enough. I want to speak something to you and I want you to put it in the chat for me. I want you to recognize that you carry kingdom solutions. Can you put that in the chat? I carry kingdom solutions. And I know what some of you are going to say. Well, how can that be? I'm going to tell you how that is to be. Number one, in, in Ephesians 2.10, God spoke it so beautifully about what we carry. And I'm going to read this from the Amplified Classic Version. It says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus born anew everybody say i'm born anew that we may do those good works which god predestined planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Listen to me. There is this place of occupancy that the enemy has been lying to you, telling you that you are disqualified to be uh, um, you uh, partnering with the Lord. You are disqualified to have any um, movement with him. I'm telling you, you are not disqualified. This verse right here tells me throughout and through in that God has predestined for you specifically. Dorothy Lewis, this is your assignment. I'm not giving it to anybody else. It is yours. Deb Forney, this is your assignment. Your assignment. I didn't call Melissa to it. I didn't call Susan to it. I called you to it. I want each and every one of you to recognize you have assignments. And if you still have breath in your lungs and you are talking and you're breathing, you need to realize those assignments need to come forth. They need to come forth. Not only do you carry kingdom solutions, you also are in a place with him that you are a part of his greater plan. He wants you to recognize you are part of it. So stop disqualifying yourself from the equation. So here is lie number three that we buy into. Ready? Lie number three, it says this. <clears throat> I'm not capable. I'm not capable because I don't have the education. 
I'm not capable because I don't have the sphere of influence. I don't have the friends. I don't have people in higher, higher positions that could get me there. I don't have the means, whether it be money, whether it be resources, whether it be time. Time's another conversation that I want to have with us that I may do another month from now because it's so important. I want to talk about time. But that's for another conversation. I digress. Go back. The lie we believe, I'm not capable. Do you know what that is? That's a lie. We, it, it puts us in a disqualification. Do you understand and recognize that the Bible has different people that God partnered with to bring forth his kingdom purposes in that time and those seasons? Because he wanted us to realize that those same battle of inferiorities and insecurities and those limiting mindsets that they battled with, he knew that we too would be battling. And I love it when, when Peter and John are at the gate and the Sanhedrin and the priests come to him and, and they had just performed this miracle and they recognize and they said, though they had been with Jesus, they were uneducated men, but they had spent time with Jesus. Come on. You know what? I never had a college degree. That was the one thing when um, I, I uh, was pursuing ministry. I have always been Holy Spirit trained. Always. And it wasn't up until years ago um, that when the Lord said, OK, I want you to get additional education now. And I went to a Bible school back in um, Pittsburgh, Greater Works Bible School. I would highly encourage all of you, those of you in Pittsburgh to a go to attend phenomenal um, instructors, phenomenal teachers. Contact Dean Andy. Tell them Rev Melissa is sending you. Um, honestly, you will not be disappointed. Um, with that, I want to just say the education, though, was this aspect, this place in my life that I just felt like, man, you know, the enemy kept throwing up. And then I realized I can no longer live like that. And it was after I was ordained that there were certain individuals that challenged me on my ordination. And they said, you need to push that aside. And I knew that the journey um, it wasn't so much about being ordained with me and God because I wasn't going in for that. I was going for the education. And I said, no, I'm not. I will not push that aside because there was something greater. And you may try to say it's not a qualifier on your part, but it's a qualifier on mine. Not the ordination, but the experience of what I went through, how I went through it with God, what I learned about him and what I discovered about myself. And I thought, nope. That ordination is just a stamp. It's an imprint. It's, it is what God said. I am proud of you, my daughter. Come on. Some of you need to know that there are areas where the enemy is highlighting and telling you, you can't, you are not valuable enough to boot, go and be a part of this because you're not educated. You're not capable. You don't have the resources. That's another one. Can I, can I, mm, we got to stop hiding behind that lie. We do. We, you know, it's easier to hide behind that excuse versus saying, God, I'm going to give you what I have and know that you're my everything and know that you're the multiplier and Lord, that you're going to take me on the process of what I need to do next. Right. And so you give him what you have. When I started, let me just tell you something. When I started Enduring Hope Ministries, let me take you back. When I started working as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman, full-time president, um, CEO of our business, we were there was three other partners, but it was the title that I was given. I, I was so insecure. And I was working with three other gentlemen who are beautiful friends, but there were things that God was working out of me. Do you know our company at the time, and the Lord showed me, we became the fastest growing company. 
fastest growing company in Pittsburgh back in the 2000s, early 2000s. We were awarded so many awards. He had shown me that my picture was going to be on the cover of a, a magazine back in Pittsburgh. It was phenomenal. When I started Enduring Hope Ministries, there were these places where I had to walk with him. It was me on this journey. I had not walked before. That's what I want to highlight to you, all of you. Those places where you feel disqualified, God has already seen you qualified. He's just looking for you to grow, to mature with him. It's going to stretch you. It's going to challenge you. And sometimes those places puts us in a position where it challenges our thoughts about how we see God, about how we see ourselves, about how we see others. It's that place. Okay, lie number two. Ready? I'm not significant enough to either execute, perform this solution. We are believing the lie that we have no relevance. In other words, we have no voice. Mm -mm. That's not God's initial intent. His intent, he said, is that we are to be created in his likeness and in his image and that we were to work with man and we were to be blessed and we were to multiply and we were to subdue. Come on, you have a voice. If this is my one prayer for all of you is discover your voice. Discover your voice. And that might be that question like, God, what is it that you need me to discover about myself that I don't see yet? Because I've been living under this banner over here and I don't want to live it like that. I want to have my voice. There's passions, God, that you've placed inside me. There's desires that I want to see and have come forth. I want it to come. I want to see it come. I don't want to keep, keep putting limitations on myself. I don't want to keep occupying that place. Here's the third one. This is really big. Ready? It's the I can't trust myself. You know what that is? This is the imposter mindset. I can't trust myself that I'm hearing God correctly. I can't trust myself to make that decision. And many times what happens is that maybe we have stepped out and times pass and seasons pass. And all of a sudden we find ourselves, maybe we it, it didn't turn out the way he, we had anticipated. It, it didn't look the way we had thought. And then all of a sudden we're chucking it all. Or it is we've been raised up by people around us. Remember, our experiences play into that. And there's always been somebody making a decision for us. Always somebody saying it needs to be done like this. And it's like, that's the voice you hear. That's the voice you hear. And you're saying, I can't trust myself. I'm not capable. I'm disqualifying myself. No more. I want to look at two distinct verses tonight. Oh, that tie into knowing that we are valuable. The first verse is Deuteronomy 8.18. I would love for you all to just make note of it. And I'm going to highlight a few things to you. This is this truth part that's going to negate the lies that the enemy has been trying to highlight to you. And now I want you to put the spotlight on truth. Okay? Spotlight on truth. And it says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. I want to break down this verse. It says, it is he who gives you power. That word power, it means ability. The, um, it means able. It means might. It means strength. It means substance. I want to say to all of you, you have the greatest substance of all time in your life, and that is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I wake every day and I say, Holy Spirit, let me be sensitive to you. Holy Spirit, give me eyes to see and ears to hear. 
eyes to see and ears to hear. It's not just in my quiet time with him. It is a philosophy that I take out with me throughout the day. And it is this place where, he, where God is saying, I've given you the greatest substance and I'm willing to give you everything you need to execute what's before you. So what's before you? What is God asking of you to do because he's willing to give you the blueprint? And you're saying, I don't know about that. You know what? If you're saying that and you're not sure, it's many times you're struggling with, will God give me what I need? Will he really reveal? And I want to answer that. Yes, he will. I want to tell you what happened to me over the weekend. I went to the grocery store yesterday and... <clears throat> I said, Ron and I were celebrating Mother's Day and um, it was just he and I, and I wanted, I went to church. It was beautiful. And I said, I want a pot roast for dinner. That's what I wanted. I was so hungry. I've been hungry for pot roast. Anybody back up north <laughs> hungry for pot roast? And I, I said, I want to stop at the store. But I also knew that we were out of Parmesan cheese. We had ran out. And I said, Ron, I want to grab some Parmesan cheese. And it was interesting because as there at the line, it was kind of busy. There was people in the aisle. And I went, went over to grab the Parmesan cheese. And I literally took three steps. And there was this fleeting thought that came in that said that Parmesan cheese has been opened. Now, I could have just went on my way threw it in and got home to realize that the Parmesan cheese was opened at a later date. But I paused. I actually took the lid off and sure enough, the whole lid had been taken off, you know, that, that seal. And you could tell there had been Parmesan removed. Don't know why. I took that container and I grabbed a different one and I, <laughs> actually checked it to make sure that it was sealed and I put it in my buggy and Ron's going why do you have two Parmesan cheeses and I said it's really just one one was opened already I want to give it to the store clerk so that somebody else doesn't find themselves in that situation I tell you that story that experience because of this if God is so willing to speak to me about Parmesan cheese, how much more is he willing to speak to me about the blueprints of the good works of what he has for me to do? Simple thing, blueprint, pause, Parmesan cheese, blueprint for good works. Do you see how that life expectancy just literally changed that experience, just uprooted my faith to say, God, if you could pause for this and help me stop with that. Wow. How much more are you willing to reveal to me? So everybody in their comments, I would love for you to write in Parmesan cheese, Parmesan cheese, because you're going to remember that. Because God was willing to give it to you just like he was willing to give it to me. The second verse, a uh, point about um, Deuteronomy is this, is the word wealth. And it refers to as a force, whether of men or means or resources. But it's wealth, it's virtue, it's valor. It has to do with strength. It has to do with actual riches and substance. So God is saying, listen, I've given you the greatest substance of all, Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give you that so that you can get wealth. That means have influence, be a force to reckon with, be a force, power, Wonder Woman. Come on, Wonder Woman, a force to reckon with to move in the strength and the power to bring the influence of what God needs to be a part of his kingdom solution, to carry the kingdom solution of what he desires. I want to look at one last verse. 
Psalm 139, 14, verse 14. And it says, <clears throat> I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Marvelous. I want you to look at that word wonderfully made. It has four distinct um, definitions. The first is that it means to be distinct. In other words, you are one of a kind. There's no two, two snowflakes alike. There's no two people alike. The imprints on our fingers are not alike. No one has the same. You are very distinct. The second is that we have been separated. You are the leader of the pack. You are to be influential in the very things of what God has cut out for you to do, for where God wants you to be, for where God wants you to speak. He has caused you to be that chief leader. Stop thinking in the terms of world. I'm going to have a world impact. No, just say, God, what's my world? What's my place? What's my sphere of impact? What's my sphere of where you want me to leave your kingdom imprint from the good works that you desire for me to do? What's my place? What does that look like? You know what? The Lord is, his heart is saddened. His heart is angered by the injustices that are happening around the world. We see it from the sex trafficking, the slavery, the racism, the discrimination. There is world hunger, the, the diseases that are impacting people, different, different things that are happening to just even also the intolerances of just what's happening within education systems, governments, people using positions of power for the wrong means, right? For their own personal gain. Or how about just the just infectious, and I say this, infectious ideologies and doctrines that are trying to be passed down through different systems in our culture. It is saddening to him, but I want to also say to you that there is something of value within you. There is a million dollar woman within you. There is the wonder woman within you that God is saying it is now your time to step up, step out and do the very things that I'm calling for you to do. I love this because this also verse refers to as we are distinguished. We're women of excellence. That's what that means. There is a women of excellence that we don't bow down to anything. We're not bowing down to um, self-promotion, self-preservation. It's not about me, myself, and I. It is about kingdom mindset, giving, moving with the kingdom, seeing God, and operating the way he is. And then the fourth thing is knowing that we are just wonderful, that we are God's delight. We are inspiring. We are his pleasure. I want to say this to you because I feel in my heart so many of you dread waking up in the morning because you don't see yourself as valuable. You don't see yourself as being God's delight. You don't see yourself as him gaining pleasure out of you. You focus on what's wrong with you. You focus on your mistakes. You focus on the mishaps and what you keep finding yourself in. When God says, oh, but do you see how you've grown here? Do you see how you're growing over here? Do you see how you're growing even right here with me? When you're choosing to look to me, when you're choosing to, even in the midst of your turmoil and your angst and your frustration and your anger and your hurt, you come to me and you're saying, God, I'm dealing with this. And he says, yes. In times past, you would have been like, I reject that person. I'm I'm ticked off at them. I'm not going to da, 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 da. I'm trying to use not the wrong language, <laughs> right? But instead, we have this mindset where we go, God, I need your will in this situation. I want my heart right first and foremost. That's how we know we're growing with him. When we say, God, I need your heart because I want to love you with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, 
all my strength, everything within me. So I want to ask you, what is your spotlight on? What is your spotlight on? Are you seeing yourself from a state of royalty? Royalty is within your thoughts, your attitude, and your behaviors. It's this place of occupancy where you're saying, God, I'm honoring you. I want to honor you. And as I do, I may not be pretty. I'm not, I'm not, I, I may not look good, but I, I'm going to keep working it out with you. God would rather you focus on taking the next step with him than you trying to be perfect. The enemy banks on you to be perfect. You're not perfect and you won't be perfect. There was only one who was perfect and his name was Jesus. So get yourself and let yourself loose. Let yourself off the hook. You're not going to be perfect. God knew where you would be, the state you would be in, in this season of your life. And that's what I want to focus on as we close. You're in a season, but you keep working that season out with him. And you keep pushing in with him and saying, God, if I have to just do it one more day, one more day, I'm going to keep going with you. I'm going to keep going with you. I'm going to keep going with you. Okay. So I didn't just want to close tonight and just me closing in prayer, but I would love for you to close in prayer with me. And I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer. And then I'm going to have you do two assignments that will help reinforce because as a Bible teacher, there is this part of me, and as a coach, you guys know this, I'm a spiritual coach and a Bible teacher. There is this part, it's called application. The more you apply something, the more you will come to believe it in your own life. Amen? So I want to do this. I'm going to read this prayer, and I want you to pray back with me. Ready? Father God. For the times I have come into an agreement with the lies that are counter to your truth, I ask you to forgive me. Either of knowingly or unknowingly acting upon those lies. I thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Today, God, I come into an agreement with not my feelings of that I'm not doing enough for you to earn your love and approval, but to know that you have already approved me. I come out of an agreement with feeling that I am not worthy enough to receive from you. I will no longer allow the spotlight to be upon what I do, but I will intentionally keep my eyes fixed upon my who, and that is my Jesus. I come out of an agreement that I'm not capable to do what you have placed in my heart. I will not allow fear, doubt, or insecurities to be the voice that I listen to anymore. I come out of agreement that I'm not significant enough. My relevance was deemed when you made the good works and assigned them to me. I will no longer allow the spotlight to be on my insufficiencies, but recognize that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am 
a voice for you. Not to be drowned out, dismissed, overlooked, belittled, disqualified, but I am a voice for you. I have the ability to carry your kingdom solutions to where you are leading me to make an imprint for you, for our King Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to partner with you. And I thank you, God, that you are going to do exceedingly and abundantly all I could think, ask, or imagine. I ask and I seal this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Wow, let me just say this. Okay, so you prayed that prayer. Here's two other things that I would love for you to do for me. Number one, if you struggle, um, this is that area, and I really want you to take time with this tonight. Not someday, not tomorrow, but tonight. Okay, I know we've kind of gone over, um, but it's okay. Holy Spirit was doing what he needed to do. I want you to focus on the valued and the valuable. Break it down. The valued. And I want you to come up with 10 I am statements that are in the word of God. I am significant. I have a voice. I am an influencer. I am smart. I am wise. I have the ability, right? I don't, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you just to say, oh, I'm a child of God. I need you to go deeper, right? Watch the Christianese language. Look at and say to yourself. And so I want you to come with 10 I am statements. And here's what I want you to do from today until the next week, when we get together next Monday, every day you repeat those 10 I am statements. Okay. The second thing I want you to do is that, or do you see that you're valuable? The valuable part is this. I want you and I would encourage you to look at the very thing that you have been trying to disqualify yourself from. And I want you to take one action to do it. One action, one step that will bring that thing, whatever that is, to fruition in your life. And sometimes I'm not asking you to succeed right away. I'm just saying, take one step, take action because you are valuable. And that one action might be, you know what? I need to get together with a couple girlfriends, talk about something that might I'm, I'm thinking about partnering with them on, or to I might be uh, just needing to contact a publishing company, or I might be looking to investigate what does it mean to operate an LLC and what are my options? It's taking that step, whatever it is, because God wants you to be a voice, whether it's in government, business, in your family, in your community, in, in, in different forms of ministry, whatever it is, take action. Amen? Okay, so I close off with this. And I want to remind you, what's your spotlight on? Because if your spotlight is on the negative, it becomes a blind spot to you. So keep your spotlight on the positive of him and who he has deemed you to be. Amen. <laughs> All right. I just pray you are so blessed this evening. I am looking forward to sharing the word with you next week. Do me a favor. Take um, five seconds after this video is done and share it uh, with, you know, on your feed. Highlight some people and say, you need to listen to this one. It's going to blow you away. All right. I will see you next week. I love all of you. I am praying for you, believing big. Amen. Mwah. Have a good night.